Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to review some simple steps that you can follow in order to process your own payroll. Um, and so before we jump in, I just want to give a quick disclaimer that um, these steps are pretty general. Um, they're gonna give you a really good basis that you can follow in order to process payroll for your team. Um, but depending on where you are, depending on where your employees are, there are some state-specific guidelines that you will have to follow. Um, and so throughout these steps, I'm going to highlight a couple of different things that you'll want to pay attention to and a couple of different areas where specific state mandates may become relevant to you. Um, and so we'll go over that pretty generally, but I'm going to link in the description of this video our state payroll guides. Um, that we have live on our site that break down different regulations from how you can pay your employees to how often you can pay your employees um, and a bunch of other things that impact your payroll process. And we'll give you that information on a state-by-state -state basis so you can get the most accurate information for you. So um, these will be just some eight simple steps that you can follow. It gives you a really good basis to start processing payroll for your own team um, but like I said, we'll call out a couple of different areas where state guidelines are super important to understand, and we'll make sure that we have those linked in the description so that you can um, check those out after you're finished watching this video. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing you'll need to do is set your business up as an employer. You'll have to apply for a federal ID number with the IRS. You'll also need to apply for any state ID numbers that you're going to need in the states that you're processing payroll. Um, every state is a little bit different. Some require that you just register with the Department of Revenue, while others require that you also register with the Department of Labor or other agencies that are relevant there. Um, so for more information on what state agencies you'll need to register with, depending on what state you do business in, you'll definitely want to check out our uh, state payroll guides. You'll also need to sign up for an account with the EFTPS, which is the Electronic Federal Transfer System. And this is just the online system that you'll use in order to make your tax payments. Um, from there, you'll definitely want to start a bank account that's just for your payroll transaction that's separate from your main business account. This is a really good way to stay organized and to make sure you know exactly what you're paying in payroll, what you're paying in taxes, um, and it's a really good way to stay organized. The next thing you'll want to consider is workers' comp insurance. Most states require it, and each state's regulations around workers' comp is a little bit different um, regarding when you need to get a workers' comp policy after hiring your first employee, and also where you can get it from. Some states have a state insurance fund that you can obtain coverage through there, while others require that you obtain coverage through a private insurance company. Um, so you'll definitely want to check out our state payroll guides for that as well. We have sections on workers' comp insurance um, in all of our guides that will give you some information that's specific to your state. The next thing you'll want to do is establish your payroll process. So you'll want to make sure that you understand what kind of employees you have. Um, do you have hourly employees? Do you have exempt, non-exempt? Are they full-time? Are they part-time? If you do have hourly employees, how are you going to have your employees track their time? Are you going to use an online time card service? Um, are you going to use an Excel spreadsheet? Um, that's a really important thing you'll want to consider. Um, from there, benefits. Um, are you going to be offering benefits? If so, who's going to pay them? Will you offer them to all of your employees, full-time and part-time, just full-time? Um, next, you'll want to consider pay schedule. This is another component to the payroll process that can be really different depending on what state you're in. Some states require that you pay your employees a certain amount of times per month, while others leave that decision to you. So you'll want to check out our payroll guides to see what the regulations around pay schedules are, and then from there determine what's best for your business, weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, and so on and so forth. Um, you'll also definitely want to make sure you're considering taxes. How often will you have to pay taxes? Um, are you going to be subject to paying state taxes? Will your employees have to pay local taxes? Um, figure out what those rates look like if you do. The next thing will be payroll processing and calculations. Now, how are you going to do your payroll calculations? Will you use an Excel spreadsheet? Are you going to want to do those uh, calculations by hand using a calculator? Um, are you going to utilize a payroll software from that? So you'll definitely want to uh, consider how you're going to do your payroll calculations. And finally, paychecks. Will you be cutting manual checks to your employees? Um, do you prefer to have the option to pay them using direct deposit? Um, will you want to offer them pay cards, pay them with cash? 
Here's another part of the payroll process that you'll want to consider state regulations. Some states don't allow the use of pay cards, um, and some states even require that you receive written consent from your employee before allowing them to collect their paychecks using direct deposit. So another really important component that you'll want to make sure that you're considering. Step three, collecting your employee's payroll forms. Um, so you'll definitely want to collect a federal W-4, which is the federal tax withholding document, which is going to tell you what tax rate to use for the employee. Um, same on the state level, whether it's a state W-4 or whatever equivalent form that state has. If your employees are in states that have state withholding, you'll definitely want to make sure you have their state withholding document so you can make those, um, you can make those withholdings accurately. Um, the I-9 form or the work eligibility form has a component that needs to be filled out by the employee, but also a component that needs to be filled out by the employer. So you'll want to definitely make sure that you get that upon hire and you take care of that in a timely manner. Um, and finally, new hire reporting. So each state is a little bit different with their requirements of when you need to file your new hire reporting docs um, and where you need to file them. Some have online reporting softwares that you can use. Um, some states want you to file those reports within 10 days. Some give you a full 30 days. Um, and it's important to note that if you use a payroll software like Gusto, they will handle all of these documents for you. So once you onboard an employee into Gusto, they will automatically have that employee fill out all of their withholding forms, federal, state, even if there's local forms that need to be filled out. Um, once the employee provides their address, their software will automatically know exactly what documents they need to fill out. Same with the new hire reporting. Gusto will actually complete all of that new hire reporting on your behalf if you decide to go that route and use a software like that. Um, so just something important to, to consider if you are thinking about using payroll software. Step four, collecting timesheets, reviewing, and approving. Now this is really important, like we said before, if you establish that you do have hourly employees. It's really important to have a process in place to make sure that you are collecting these timesheets no matter how you decide to have your employees fill them out. If you use an Excel document, if you're using paper timesheets, if you decide to use a software like Homebase that we're showing you here, um, it's important to have a process in place to make sure you're looking those over, you're making sure that they're accurate, and you're reviewing and approving them in a timely manner so that payroll can get out the door um, and make sure that it's accurate. You wanna make sure you're looking for things like lunch breaks and any um, time off for meals and anything like that. Um, you'll just want to really make sure that you have a process in place um, to avoid any errors in the payroll process. Step five, doing payroll calculations. Now this can be one of the more cumbersome components to doing payroll. And the first thing you'll need to do is make sure that you have the gross pay. Now gross pay is pretty simple. It's just going to be the hours that your employee worked multiplied by their hourly rate, or if they're salaried, it's just going to be their straight salaried amount for that pay period. You'll want to make sure you're taking into consideration overtime um, to make sure that that's part of their gross pay as well. Now, next is going to be payroll deductions and taxes. So what deductions need to come out of your employee's pay? Are there benefits that need to be deducted? Um, do they have any sort of garnishments that need to be taken out? Um, any miscellaneous deductions like uniform expenses, things like that. And then taxes, Social Security, Medicare, um, federal withholding, if there is a state withholding, you'll want to make sure that you have all of those amounts ready and in hand when you do payroll to be deducted from gross pay. Step six, pay your employees, tax agencies, and benefit providers. Now, once you've calculated what your employee's gross pay is and you've deducted any taxes, deductions, benefits, things like that, you'll be left with your net pay, which is the actual amount that you have to issue to your employees with their paycheck. Um, it's really important that you do these calculations on time so you can make sure you're issuing paychecks by payday so your employees are paid on time. And once your employees are paid, the next thing you'll really want to make sure you focus on is any tax payments or benefit payments that need to be issued. It's really important that any payments that are owed for um, your benefit providers or taxes are issued by their due date to make sure that you're avoiding any penalties, that you're avoiding any lapse in coverage that can um, be created from not paying these on time. So it's really important that once your employees are paid, you focus on making payments to any tax agencies or benefit providers where money is owed. Step seven. So the next step is gonna be completing your year-end payroll tax reports. So for any of your employees, it's gonna be the W-2, 
and for any of your independent contractors, it's going to be the 1099. Now, both of these forms report the total earnings that you have been paid to them throughout the duration of the year. Um, and the W-2 is also going to include taxes paid. Of course, that won't be included in the 1099 since we won't be deducting any taxes from your independent contractor's pay. Um, and both of these documents need to be in the hands of your employees and independent contractors by January 31st of the following year. So you want to make sure that you're staying organized throughout the year. You want to make sure that you have this as part of your process to make sure that these are completed. If you use a payroll software, um, you can usually, it's either included in what you um, have already engaged for them to do, or you can usually pay um, an additional fee with some payroll providers for them to file these documents for you. And then you won't need to worry about it. And finally, step eight is document and store your payroll records. Now, each state has regulations that are a little bit different, um, but this is some general guidelines that we've put in place uh, regarding federal labor laws and retaining your payroll documents. Now, we have actually an article that goes into specifics of time cards and pay stubs and all different types of information regarding pay increases and things like that and um, exactly what you'll need to do in order to be compliant, exactly how long you'll need to keep those um, those on file. So this is just a quick reference point of a couple of the different things that um, are part of the hiring process and how long you'll have to keep them. But we do have an article that focuses on this specifically. So I'm also going to make sure that I tag that in the description of this video. So you can use that for reference if that would be helpful for you. So now that we've gone through the eight steps of processing payroll, um, a quick tip to leave you off with is to use a checklist to stay organized. A lot of the things that we talked about throughout this video um, really require you to stay on top of the payroll process to make sure that things are being done accurately, that they're being done in a timely manner. So this is actually um, a free small business payroll checklist that we've created for you that can keep you on track as you're going throughout the payroll process. Um, and so we're gonna have this available for download also in the description below. Um, so you have access to it so you can use this to hopefully help you stay organized throughout the payroll process. It's not something you have to do. You don't need to use a checklist in order to process payroll efficiently, but it can be a really helpful way to stay organized um, and just to make sure that there is nothing being missed throughout. So I'll make sure that this is linked below. Um, and that's really all you'll need to know in order to do payroll. Those are eight simple steps that you can follow that will keep you on track, that will make sure your payroll is accurate. Um, and if you have any other questions, you can feel free to ask them below and um, we will definitely try to guide you as best as we can. So thanks for watching and um, check out our articles below for any more information you may need.